We finally did it. Multiplayer Gaming Podcast has a Patreon you can join right now. You can now get exclusive access to our Discord server and see behind the scenes as we talk about the games you know and love, as well as uncover those gems you haven't heard of yet. You can have the chance to game with Josh, Paul, and I, and get sweet custom shirts, games, stickers, and more. Just go to MultiplayerSquad.com to sign up for the Patreon. Hello! Welcome to the Multiplayer Podcast. I'm your host, Todd, and you're listening to This Week in Gaming. Tonight, I have a great show for you guys, covering some of our week in video games and what we've heard in the news. Uh, let me introduce you to my crew, the Mongo two-time slalom winner, Paul. Uh, are those skating terms, Todd? <laughs> those are skating terms. Ooh, and... You know Oh, go on. Then. You know what my favorite skate move is, right? Um, the McTwist. It's the Benihana. I love me some teppanyaki oh, cooking. Oh, Benihana. <laughs> Benihana, baby. <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting that, but I'm glad you said it. <laughs> yeah. They're related, right? Um, yeah. And the goofy gold medal Burt Rider, Josh. Gnarly dude, I'm going to grab a fishtail whip, 360 grind, forward, flip. Please please don't talk about surfing. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> Hang loose, man. Yeah. <laughs> Skaters still <laughs> say gnarly. Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. Skaters uh, from the 80s, maybe. Probably. Yeah. Probably. All right, guys. First topic, it's it's a doozy. I didn't see it coming. EA Access and Steam have a new love child, if you will. So EA Access is basically killing Origins and creating a subscription service on Steam. And they uploaded all of their games um, to be purchased through the Steam store. So it, it just seems like they they are deprecating and sunsetting the Origin store at this point. They haven't actually announced that they're shutting down Origin, but the writing on the wall is that they're probably going that way. Like, they've actually come out and said, hey, we're going to have both, you know, so that people have the choice of where they want to go. But yeah, but at at this is this is the first step in shutting down origins. Like you <laughs> you put your material on the other store, <laughs> and then step two is shutting down origins. Yeah, this is the first of several conversations <laughs> that ends with we're shutting down origins. Is is that basically what you're saying, Todd? Yeah, I mean this is this is one of those things where they probably have some contract somewhere that makes it so they can't shut down origins or some partnership they don't want to give up. So like Origins is still going to stay up for a while, but at some point, like I don't think they're gonna be selling as many games just because everyone who has a PC is on Steam. So most people are probably going to get like the EA games from there, and then it's just the like looking at cost and EA at some point is going to say it's not worth having the Origin store. We're not selling enough. Let's just put everything on Steam. Thank goodness, too, because, man, do I have, like, video game launcher fatigue. This is insane. It's like all of the different streaming services that we have now. Like, I don't know about you guys. I don't know how many streaming services you guys have. But between Netflix, Amazon Prime, Vudu, Hulu... I even have Peacock right now. Have either of you two signed up for that? Peacock? No. I was I was interested, but no. <laughs> I signed up for a free trial of Peacock. It's NBC's streaming service. Uh, Brave New World, not a bad show. I'll throw that out there. But like, I don't know where half my games are. Like sometimes I go looking for Mass Effect, and I don't remember because mine are split. I have Mass Effect One and Two in Steam, but Mass Effect Three and Andromeda in Origin. <laughs> and so it's like, please, can we just combine all these? Let me 
let me play all my games from one source. That so is I, so. I like this news, Paul. I don't think this is going to fix that problem specifically. Well, Josh and I were reading a little bit about this. What was the one blurb that you had read, Josh, about how they'll be more than happy to sell you a second copy? Oh, yeah. Because it won't carry over to (laughs) Steam? (laughs) I mean, classic (laughs) classic EA here. So if you bought the game on Origin, you do not get the game on Steam, even though they're putting it on Steam, but they're happy to let you buy it again on Steam if you prefer that platform. Oh, you man. Know. When, when you and what? I were... Uh, Josh and I were online at the same time, and Josh read that part of the article, and we both just died laughing that EA's more than happy to sell you a second version. Of They're course they are. good guys. You know, it's like, so that funny. way you can have your game, like, doubly... Like, like what happens if, if something bad happens to Origins? You have a copy on Steam that you paid for. Like, they just really want to look out for the gamers so that you can play the games uninterrupted that's, i'm sure that's their their reasoning that's so backwards <laughs> like <laughs> in any way you cut that like what are they doing now i now, can't i can't believe steam didn't even say like hey guys like are you sure you want to do this like you can you can just give them a game like it's not a big deal it's it, we do it all the time we give ton tons of games away now they did come out and say that there will be crossplay between the two. That that makes up for everything, right? Like if you know, if your friends on Origin and you're on Steam and you're both playing the same game, you can actually play together. Well, that's good because <laughs> Apex would be dead <laughs> if that didn't you can happen do that anyway. <laughs> like there's no- um, and all right, all right. So away from EA a little bit, I th- this opens up really interesting doors for Steam. Now Steam has subscriptions, so you can unlock a large bundle of games for a price, which is going to be really cool for indie game developers to get like players on their platforms um, for you know other AAA title companies. But it's 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 opening up a new chapter for Steam. This is Steam progressing. Like everyone, everyone says like. Steam's just been doing the same thing. Like, they're finally changing some of their business model, at least a little bit. Well, and not only that, if it's going to be similar to the Origin Access subscription, they have such a large back vault of good old games. It could be really good. I mean, by the time this podcast releases, the EA Access will already be live because I believe it goes live on August 18th. But the EA backlog includes stuff like all the Dead Space games, the Mass Effects, the Dragon Ages, A Way Out, Anthem, all the Battlefields, Mirror's Edge, The Escapists. There are so many good games, and on Origin, it only costs $5 a month or 30 a year. And so if you wanted to go back and play a lot of those old games, you could just drop $30, have a full year, knock a whole bunch of those out. So it has a lot of potential. I'm very curious to see what actual games are on there once it goes live. Yeah. I noticed going through some of the, like, marketing material, games like The Witness, which EA didn't, like, make themselves, um, or at least publish themselves, didn't make the jump from Origins to Steam, probably because, like, they sell The Witness on Steam. (laughs) Right. Um, So... It it will be interesting, like, what the cut is between, like, it, is Origins just now a store that you buy from? Can you still have, like, the Game Pass on Origins? Is that sticking around? Or, like, what combination of what in between Steam and Origins? And it it's going to make everything confusing for at however long they keep Origins around before they kill it. Is there really anybody out there that is like, no, I prefer Origins. That's my platform of choice. Like, that's, man, that's my launcher, boys. That was like the people who held on to, what was the Google social media? Oh, Google Plus? I can't Plus. remember the name now. Google Plus? Is Google that Plus. Also, that was, <laughs> was like how people, Facebook. <laughs> yeah, people really held on to Google Plus for a while. 
no no one yeah. prefers origin it's yeah preposterous it it will be cool all, like having the workshop and like a mod community being like better embraced with steam because they do have a lot of games that are moddable like the sims or uh sim city like any of those like a a strong mod community has grown around it and having a workshop type area will be cool for it yeah i mean i like steam i i'm i'm all for my games being housed there i've never had any issues with them i mean i know that they take a lot from the developers and stuff like that so i'm sure ea has worked out a good deal with them but i'm i'm okay with that personally put them put them all in one place yeah all right, and then next on our list, Outriders. Ooh, this game. This game looks intense. I think it looks great. So for people that may not have heard of this game, number one, do yourself a favor, go look up a, a gameplay trailer for Outriders. This is Bioware uh, is developing this, and it to me, I think it looks like Anthem. But without the jetpacks, but with a much more fleshed out actual game, like people have people have called it Mass Effect meets Diablo. And you put those two games together. Ooh, Hello. Ooh. Yeah, that's exactly. A, that's a good combo. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, beautiful. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, watching these videos, I normally do not follow a whole lot of gaming news before games come out because I'm a very impatient person. I don't want to know about the game because I'm going to want to play it. So I would rather just kind of be surprised when my friends tell me like, oh, hey, did you know Cyberpunk just released today? And I'd be like, oh, great. I'll go pick it up. But, you know, I know like Josh loves watching these, you know, video leaks that keep coming out slowly over the course of years before these games come out. But Outriders actually is one that I watched about 30 minutes of footage already. And it looks really fun. Now, Todd, I do have some bad news for you. In all the videos I've watched, I don't think don't don't no ray don't tracing. say it. There is <laughs> oh well, there's probably no ray tracing, but what? I have not seen any jumps, and it's uh. cover based combat, so it's exactly like Mass Effect two and three. And Todd looks very sad right now. He doesn't so, look so happy. Okay, why why have a space bar and not have jump in a game? Why That's have what it's an for. A button on a controller? What what are you gonna do with that button? What are you gonna do with the A button? If if I press the A button in a first or third person shooter, I ex- I expect to jump. That's all I'm saying. Or take cover. One of the two. No. Yeah. Why would I take cover? <laughs> so you it's don't a get jump shot. button. <laughs> you know you can still get shot if you're jumping, right? <laughs> Makes you a not beacon. the way I play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what, though? There's kind of a history here where Bioware doesn't like jumping. Like, in Dragon Age, it pauses combat, so you can select your attacks. Uh, same That's with Mass so Effect. Funny. Yeah, they don't they do not do jump. But it does have uh, cover-based mechanics, and the actual gunplay does remind me a little bit of Destiny. It looks very smooth and very fun. You get to run around with multiple weapons, quickly swap back and forth. You also have different... I don't know if it's like magic or biotics, but you do have different abilities that use like different elemental powers. So you see different uh, earth element powers and fire and slowing down enemies. It looks very fun. And I think especially for playing with groups of friends, it'll be a blast. It does remind me a little bit of like the Diablo three play style, but it's a little more behind the character. It's not like bird's eye top down. It looks more like from the Mass Effect. It uh, I did get a you see that's the thing I did get a definite like Mass Effect vibe from the videos. Maybe it was the camera angle. Like now that you mentioned mm-hmm. that, like I don't know if it's just the character style or the art, but something something did like when somebody was like, "Hey, this is Mass Effect meets Diablo." Like that clicked for sure. Um, I I'm just super excited about it because i love like class-based gameplay like i know there's three classes in this game you have the pyromancer which is exactly what it sounds like i mean this guy's throwing fireballs and calling down huge pillars of fire and stuff like that 
Um, you've got a trickster, which is probably a class I Josh's instantly class. like gravitate yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. But it's like they they uh, they warp time and like bend time and stuff like that, so you can like That's slow cool. monsters down and then like punch them and stuff, and that looked really cool. And then they've got like a devastator, I think is what they call it, which is like a like the kind of like Earth guy, where it's like. In one thing, like the guy like impaled a monster, like this spike shot up from a ground and then just impaled the dude. And he was just like a shish kebab sitting there. Um, so I like you can actually watch these gameplay videos where they talk about the different classes and stuff. But you take cool abilities, different classes, group of friends, tight shooting mechanics, great loot and cool looking monsters because I know you fight like humanoid guys, but then they actually have like creatures from the planet that you're on. Monster I think hunts, it looks yeah. great. Yeah, like if if it's not super repetitive and there's some depth to the gameplay, this could be what like Anthem was supposed to be, except without flying. Right. Yeah, and there's two really big things about this game I'm very excited about. First of all, you can respec your character at any time for no cost. And the skill trees are actually very detailed and advanced. So if you run into a new piece of loot and you want to completely retool your character and try a different play style, you can do it. They did say that you can't swap things out terribly quickly while you're in combat. So you'd have to have a little bit of downtime. But I love when games give you that type of flexibility. And they did say that the game will have end game content that is not just higher difficulty with better loot. Because... That's one of the downfalls of Diablo. You play those games on normal and nightmare and insane or whatever the highest levels are. I don't remember, but that was only so interesting for so long. So I'm curious to see if this game will have more of like raid type content or something like that. They haven't really talked about what the end game looks like, but I'm very excited. The only thing that's a little bit of a bummer is that they said it's not a branching storyline. So in that sense, it's not like Mass Effect. It's a little more linear, but it does look like an absolute blast. I think it's going to be really fun. All right. I've I've watched some videos on this. I've heard you guys talk about it. I'm definitely going to play it, even though there might not be jumping. But I need to tell you guys something. It sounds like a third-person Destiny, maybe without jumping. Yeah. Which means it'll be better. Yeah. Oh, get get out of here. And it's probably not like so bloated that you can't understand what you're doing (laughs) for like the first. You're so ten hours. I I don't know why I I brought it up. (laughs) Thanks. Oh, best comeback yet. I right there. You're bloated. (laughs) Um. Yeah. I mean this this game does look fun. Um. Your mom goes to college. (laughs) She, She she she. Never mind. Um, yeah, this game does look fun. Uh, even without jumping, I think I'm still going to pick it up. Like, it, it looks like it definitely has way too much to offer. Um, but yeah, I don't know, guys. Todd will play it a minute or he'll refund one hour it. and 59 I, minutes I, I and then refund. refund it and then say, I played it, I tried it, I can't jump. What Sorry, was that? Guys. The div- the division. Oh, the you division played two. the division for four okay. minutes <laughs> exactly. No, I I played it for. I think I played it for over two hours, and I was like, I don't know Epic Game Store's policy on returns because Steam, I wouldn't have been able to return it. I think that was you play, wasn't it? <laughs> See, this oh, is anyway, what we were talking you, about. Nobody yeah. knows what platform. There's too many the launchers. Yeah, on. that's right. <laughs> Hashtag but, get rid of launchers. I think. I think if the gameplay's fluid and i still feel like i can move fast then like i won't have a problem with it it's only when like especially in like the tactical cover based ones where like you leave cover and your guys just kind of like chugging along and there's like a sprint that is the pace that walking should be then it's like okay you i have a dash that i can use every 10 seconds i can stand behind a rock Or I can chug along. Like, I want more than, like, those limiting options. Like, if they have sliding and, or, like, movement abilities, even though they might not be jumping, then I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. Cover is, from what I have seen, and I could be wrong, but cover is in the game, 
in in some of the harder fights, you probably want to utilize cover. But I've seen a lot of videos where like you're fighting hordes of monsters and you're just running around at that point. Like you're running and dodging uh you know, in like hiding a lot of and dodging. Kind of things like that. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Rolling so around. I think I think the movement speed is gonna be much better than like the division where you're right, you're just kind of like a slow sprint just to get to the next point and that's it. Like there's not a lot of movement abilities or anything like that. Next game. This one, this one we we alluded to at the beginning. Tony Hawk Pro Skater one and two remastered, Ooh, baby, and on PC. Is Tony Hawk our new Sim Ant? Because I feel like we disproportionately talk about Tony Hawk. Oh, wait, man, <laughs> that game is great. It's like a new weekly segment, Tony Hawk News. We talk about Sim Ant just the right amount. Yeah, we're not too much, not too little. Got to keep that legacy alive. All right, guys. First off, it needs to be said, the soundtrack Great. is amazing. And they're adding more music to it. Are they adding like more ska music from the 90s? <laughs> I, well, there isn't modern day ska. <laughs> That's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things like when you were playing the game, the soundtrack is what made that game so great because you would be doing tricks and grinding rails and do it. And it's just there. It's just blaring, you know, and you would get into that groove to where you it just it just flowed really, really well. So I I was very excited to hear that they were bringing back some of the music. Be very curious to see if and what newer music they incorporate there, because it's got to have the right tempo and kind of the right feeling to fit in because nothing is going to ruin, you know, skating in the warehouse. And then, you know, some bad song just comes on. (laughs) And I think they know the reputation the soundtrack has, because I, I, this is one of the few games where I literally bought the soundtrack CD Four, one, and two. Yeah, because every um, song was great. Yeah. Did you guys ever buy any other soundtracks for video games? Oh, I only uh, ever okay. bought one. Oh, for video games? Yeah. It, I, I I have one for a movie that I... It's not... It's, oh. it, it's good. I need to tell this story. All right. Paint a picture. My parents have to run a lot of errands, and they're trying to distract me as a eight-year-old-ish child so they take me to a circuit city okay you know big plug (laughs) there um circuit city and then they're like you can have a walkman and you can have one cassette and so they let me walk up and down the aisles because this was going to be the cassette that was going to distract me while they went to lowe's and home depot and wherever else so the cassette i came back with was the soundtrack to Jurassic Park. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good John soundtrack. Williams. That's a great soundtrack. But, like, I know, but as, as, as an a young, as an eight-year-old, my parents were like, are you sure this is the one you want us to buy you? Because we're only buying you one. And then I, I went the rest of the day listening to the Jurassic Park soundtrack, and it was great. Oh, that's great. Oh, I bought so many soundtracks from movies over the years, but I only ever bought one from a video game, and it was Command & Conquer. I had that on CD. It was great. Oh, nice. But yeah, so getting back to Tony Hawk, I'll be curious to see because I feel like the fun of Tony Hawk was always multiplayer. I never really cared about the single player missions and storyline. It was always all about the multiplayer. I just, yeah, for, and I don't, I'll be honest, I don't remember what the actual multiplayer was. I just remember playing with my friends and we would play a level. And then you would, you had the controller, like it was, we would just trade off the controller, but it was like, you would play until I guess you wrecked out or something like you crashed and then your run was over. You ran out of time. I, I'll be honest. I don't remember how that actually worked. S- split screen, simultaneous, whoever scored the most points within the allotted time would win. And you would go for the really big combos. Right. So if you but kept stringing even, your combos, you'd get the multipliers and score a ton of points. But even in single player, you would have a timer on it. So, like, Josh, right. I know exactly what you're talking about, where my friends and I would play multiplayer every once in a while, 
but we would run the campaign and then just pass the controller back and forth between us because like we'd want to collect all the letters that said skate or we'd want to you know jump the gap that's like in one of the missions so like we'd 100 percent the game just by like passing the controller back and forth right yeah and then it was just who could get the high score like on that level and then that was huge bragging rights and then somebody else would try to beat that and i i really hope this game is more than just the memories like I, like i i don't want to always keep bringing up halo as a reference but it's like is this halo like remastered where it sounds no, like it's going to be great it, it's but it's tony hawk but it's terrible or is this going to be like dude this game's so much fun this is the memories that i have of it or is it going to like just come right. crashing down? I think for Halo, it was a port with like a slight, slight paint job over it. So, like, let's update some of the textures. Let's, um, but then like the rest of the game's just brought over. And like, uh, some of the like reasoning you can see that is just like in movements and some of the early bugs in the game were very much like the difficulty of bringing a console game to a PC. This, I'm pretty sure they built it from the ground up. Like they didn't take Tony Hawk one and said, let's just slap new textures on it. Right. They built a new game that was Tony Hawk and then just used the level design and um, the missions and that sort of stuff for like the content in the game. So I have hope that, you know, they learned from Underground, they learned from some of those later games, like what players want, like how the combos, like make it feel a little more arcadey than realistic. And then just stick to the nostalgia about one and two. And then if you combine those two, you have like a modern game, but all the visuals are what you want them to be. That's what I'm really hoping for. And then online, like uh, the online multiplayer, like back in the day, you didn't have online multiplayer. So like Paul said, it was only split screen at that point. But now, like, are we going to all be able to like skate around and I'm going to be able to like crash into Todd and then just take him out when I want to, y you know, like I'm grinding the rail. Paul's grinding the rail. Get off my rail, Paul. You know, bam, <laughs> that kind of stuff. You know, like I'm, yeah. I'm really curious to see what that's going to equate to. Yeah. And then there, there's the question, will this bring back the franchise? <laughs> is, is this step well, one? Well, Are frosted tips coming back? Limp biscuit. Wait, all these other uh, okay. artifacts one, from the nineties. Frosted tips never went out. Okay. How dare you? <laughs> Absolutely. How dare you? <laughs> no, oh, no, no. This is not going to be a big, franchise again moving forward i would be absolutely shocked i'm not gonna lie i played so much tony hawk i feel like i still have skateboard fatigue from playing so much tony hawk in the late 90s early 2000s uh no i i don't think this will bring back the franchise but i do think this will be a fun one-off that people will enjoy you if this game makes money like i'm hyped about it like maybe maybe it won't sell to people that weren't familiar with the originals, but I would think that there's enough hype behind this that it's gonna sell a lot. And anything that sells a lot, they're gonna they're gonna continue with. Now I just want Josh to grow his hair out and get frosted tips. Oh Dude, my goodness. No lie. I had frosted tips at one point. <laughs> oh, oh I had frosted tips. I legitimately tips. when I had hair, I did not I had frosted tips and they looked legit. I did have a bowl, oh. bowl cut for several years, but never never any frosted tips. <laughs> I never had uh, a bowl cut. Did they actually put the bowl like on your head and cut it? No, no, no. All right. just the, it just looked like it. <laughs> Man. All right. Well, that wraps up the show for this week. Thank you for tuning in. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you go to the podcasting app of your choice and subscribe to get fresh content twice a week. If you're interested in finding out more information about us, you can find us on our website, MultiplayerPodcast.com, Patreon, MultiplayerSquad.com, 
Twitch TV slash multiplayer pod, Twitter slash multiplayer pod, and guys, the test. Instagram multiplayer podcast. That's the real test to see if you're listening. Yep. It's we 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 throw in a curveball every episode. It's the same curveball, but it it's there. You should be able to hit it at this point. Yeah. You you should see it coming. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's our show this week and see you guys Monday. Would you say the content is gnarly, Todd? Uh, groovy, baby. Wicked. wicked <laughs> yeah, cool. baby, yeah. Let's just bring, let's yeah, bring back Austin right. Powers. Let's bring back... Let's, what else is from 1999? Let's bring it all back. Shaw. Dude. <laughs> yeah, and monkeys might fly out of my butt. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I don't know what's going on now. Party on! Excellent! <laughs>